In this video, I'm going to give you a short introduction on the market geometry reader system and how you can use those inside of Bloodhound for building out several different conditions. The main one that we'll get started with is the market geometry reader, just the, the basic MG reader. And we're going to do this inside of the indicator threshold. So the indicator threshold in Bloodhound is the main solver that you'll be working with, with the, uh, the different market geometry readers, the line color readers, all of these different readers that access the lines that are created by the toolbar. So this is the MG reader here, market geometry reader, and I want to access the, the chart that we're on here, the 20 minute chart. So current workspace, select the chart. The chart is the 20 minute. Now, do we want to use the bar from the reader chart, which is the chart that the reader is on, or the source chart? Because we're now using the reader on the source chart, it's not going to make a difference whichever one of these is selected. The threshold is defined in ticks or average range. The average range will always be on the source chart, the chart that you're actually reading from. So if we were reading the 20 minute from a five minute chart, if I had the reader inside of Bloodhound on a five minute chart, and I set this to average range because we're accessing uh, the, the areas from the 20 minute chart, the average range is defined by the 20 minute chart. Okay, it's taking an average range of the past 50 bars leading up to the first click of the baseline. I'll keep it set to ticks and just leave it set to on the 20 minute chart, maybe three ticks. Okay, now for these different properties, you have quite a lot of control over which lines you're going to be accessing. If you want to get the direction based on slope of the line, you can turn this to true. And in that case, if you come down to a line, you'll get a long signal out of that, which is a plus one. If you're going up to a line, you'll get a short signal from that line, which is a negative one. Let me just uh, start there with direction based on slope and then turn on some of these lines. So you can turn on whichever lines you want to access one at a time per this one instance of the reader you could turn on every single line here and then get signals from every bar that is touching one of those lines, or you could just turn on a few different lines. So let's turn on the baseline, the first auto line, and the upper median line, the center median line, and the lower median line. And let's just kind of leave it at that for now, just to show you some examples here. And then I click OK. I'm going to go ahead and name this. This is a 20 minute MG. And since we're accessing the direction based on slope, I'll go ahead and add in the thresholds here. Thresholds are always descending from A to E, so the, the largest number up at the top, lowest number at the bottom, and then long is uh, any bar that's set equal to 1, and any bar that's set equal to negative 1 is the short. Okay, and I'll go over here, create a new logic, right-click, add that existing solver, and connect it. Okay, so you can see every bar that is touching either the first auto line or the center median line or the lower median line is giving us a long signal based on the slope of those lines. Okay, so because these lines are sloping up, we can only get long signals out of them. Now, if I want to also add in a price action condition so that we can only get longs when the market is moving down into a line and only get shorts when the market is moving up into a line. I can turn this property to true. This property right here, set uh, signal direction based on price action. I'll set that to true. And now we're only getting longs from the bars that are going down into a line. So these bars are going down into the first auto line these bars are going down into the first auto line, which is that channel line, and the lower median line. Okay, so this is kind of complex stuff if you know, you're know you brand new to this sort of thing, but this is the way that we're able to get these types of trade signals and then create management conditions inside of Bloodhound and Blackbird. All right, let's do a couple of other things here. So let's look at a couple of other properties. We can access only the areas that are created from an upsloping baseline. So if I set this to upsloping only, nothing changes. But now if I set it to downsloping baselines only, then we would not get any of these signals because the baseline is upsloping, you see? So you can create very specific solvers and conditions for very specific 
types of uh, market geometry that you're drawing. I'm going to set it back to either. Okay, so let's look at a couple of other things. Uh, I'm just going to describe a couple of these, uh, the relative position of the baseline to the auto line. In this case, the auto line is above the baseline. So we would say the baseline is below the auto line. And to keep the signal coming out of this, I would have to set it to uh, only accessing areas created from a baseline that is below the auto line. I'm going to leave it set to either and we'll just move down to slope of the area to read. So you can define the slope of the baseline and then the slope of the area that you want to read so that you can single out some of those. Uh, for instance, a lower median line that's upsloping that you have drawn by, for instance, creating an upsloping baseline by drawing, for instance, by drawing from the penultimate low to the ultimate low to create that upsloping lower median line. So uh, let's see if we can draw a better one from back here. And then we get the upsloping lower median line right there. Okay, so I can set baselines that are only downsloping. For instance, right here, direction of baseline must be downsloping, and then the area must be upsloping. And this is the only upsloping area that we have. Uh, the median lines, okay? So you wouldn't get, for instance here, the auto line is down sloping, so you wouldn't be able to access that because we have defined uh, the area to be up sloping. So it will only read areas that are up sloping created from a baseline that is down sloping. So we really did add in every possible scenario that you might want to account for. So I'll change these back to either. And then the min and max slopes are the values that are set uh, right here. So for instance, we have negative 0 0.17. Uh, at this one, we have negative 1.85 percentage slope. And you can set minimum and maximum bounds. I'm not going to worry about going into too much detail about that in this video. Now, let's go through some of the other conditions that you might want to address. For instance, if you want to simply get a long signal for all of the bars that are inside of a channel or inside of an upsloping channel or simply above a certain line that you may have that's upsloping or downsloping. In that case, you may want to use the line color value reader. So if you're wanting to define the slope based on a line that you've drawn on the chart, there's a number of different lines that you could possibly choose from and rather than having to build out several different solvers for each line using the value reader, what we can do is simply draw a line, a trend line for instance. Let's say that we have, well it doesn't have to be a trend line, it could be uh, a trend channel. Let's say that I want to draw from high to high and I want to get longs in here as long as we're above this upsloping auto line, this channel line here. Okay, so for this we'll use the line color value reader and I'll color the line that I want to access black. So there's the black line. If the market is above that line, then I want to get longs only. So rather than the threshold solver, you need to use the comparison solver because we're going to compare current price to the value of that line. So we'll say price, closing price of the bar, as long as it is above that black line, which we'll define now by the TTP line color value reader. Set this to the 20 minute chart and black. Now you can access whether it's up sloping or down sloping, but you're not accessing in this case a value of the bar. You're not getting a positive one or negative one for a longer or short. You're actually getting the value, the price of that line. Okay, so there is no set direction based on slope. It's just a matter of do you want to read up sloping lines only or down sloping lines only. I'll just go ahead and set it to up sloping only for this solver. And there we go. So from this point, one bar after the line starts, we're accessing the value of the line and looking at whether the closing price of the current bar is above the value of the current price of the line. Okay, so we'll name this close above or below black up sloping line. Okay, so that's at least one way that you could get just a simple trend condition out of any particular line. So I think I'll just wrap it up here.
for just a quick demo of the line color value reader uh, for a trend type of a situation, and then the MG reader for accessing bars that are touching particular lines here.